Alrighty, daily trading recap for this last trading day of October on the 29th here this Friday. No trades for me on the day, just watching pretty hard, took off pretty early after the morning session as well to uh, we'll get into the breakdown of some specific charts that I was watching, but just housekeeping going on first. Spy, another nice green day, tapping all-time highs once again, looking pretty nice in the after hours here. Another one of those times that's just following the trend, following the data, so sooner or later, I certainly got to start hopping on that opportunity that I feel I've been seeing and tracking. Market internals on the day for dollar volume, NASDAQ 258 billion dollar volume, NYSE 281 billion dollar volume, and OTC markets 2.4 billion dollar volume. We are three hours after the close here, <laughs> getting this video in a little bit later. But uh, that's all I mentioned with SPY ABB chart I wanted to mention. This was the ticker that I was pretty much solely watching this entire morning, looking for that second day play. We got a pretty nice gap about the gate here. This, of course, is a former runner. I traded this one on a dip, by, like a VWAP hold opportunity on the 16th, on the 17th of February here. So on this parabolic move, or I was actually comparing it to potential second day moves here on the 17th of February when it had very nice, very nice close and afternoon session. So looking potentially kind of any indicators of characteristics for the stock if it likes to do some specific things to that effect. So this day you can see we had perfect, it looks like two doji candles out of the gate with big volume, which doesn't really make sense. But then pretty big squeeze, uh, green, perfect move to the upside. After that, after a gap up over the night, over the after hours in pre-market. Uh, and then the March 16th as well. March, March 16th, I believe, was another second day move. If we can get this bad boy to load up here. Oh, yes, we had another pretty nice substantial first green day move. So looking for the second day play today, see if anything showed itself. And today we can actually see here we had... I kind of related this one a little bit closer to what happened today where we get, you know, a decent little close here after that first green day and then a bigger gap up. And so using this one as more of a reference to say, okay, if we do get a big screen spike immediately out of the gate, I think I would rather let it go. And it potentially wants to do some of this. And you can see here, it perfectly respects that closing line. Doesn't necessarily respect have to care about the previous high. So that was a little bit of a good reference for coming into today's charts. Um, the high it was putting in yesterday and then perfect bounce off of that to a very nice morning percentage opportunity trade there. So then coming in today, like I mentioned, yeah, that 12 cent little mark could have, should have, would have been a little bit of a resistance point or maybe a, in the back of your head uh, level of support. But in even looking at the VWAP profile or the volume profile, it doesn't even show that much uh, weight on it. So I think closing price would have been more of a line of an indicator as potential pullback point to to show some amount of support if this thing wanted to catapult higher for a second day continuation off of that. It was decent volume, decent dollar volume all throughout the day. Looking at the close here, it's showing we got $22 million volume, which is very nice to see on a sub dollar OTC ticker. Um, just, <laughs> and, and I just finished watching small cap recap with Matt Monaco. He made four grand off of you know, a trade I very easily could have been pushing the buttons and watching the whole time, but I didn't take it because I didn't feel it had the conviction, the support to come through with that trade. It's just, and I still don't know if I'm just whining or why this frustration comes over me to make four grand while I'm sitting and watching the exact same thing. And, you know, I would have been trading at $500 position size anyway. So it's, you know, it ends up turning out to be kind of close to like a 6% trade in total as he's buying just under VWAP here and selling into this little top of maybe 13.6-ish. I'll have to go back into the live trading recap. I think he traded it. Actually, he caught it perfectly on video at that point. But it's just, I just, I dedicated my full morning to this one and I was talking through everything that I was seeing on the level two of, okay, support's coming here, you know, 13, we got to you know, come a little bit of a battle with, oh, it's not showing a lot of strength and breaking down a little. So it's, as I pull it up in reflection here again too, yeah, you can certainly see that it's, as it breaks again to the upside of VWAP, uh, holds here, comes to the upside of 13, it's holding VWAP well, it's still building, it's not dying off, which maybe should have, could have, would have been another bullish sign for me in that point to say on these second day plays, it's, you know, these are crappy companies. They're not meant to just stay at these elevated price levels. It's either got to go one way or another. Maybe it just takes a little bit longer on this one, but I think I was just a little bit too in tune 
looking for the move, looking for what this block was right out of the gate. And since it didn't happen, since the bid support didn't come in, then I just thought, oh, the trade's just not there today too. So as this trade happens of this block a little bit later, this is an hour and a half after market open, crazy immediate squeeze, which is what I was looking for. The trade I was looking for, it just, I just kind of chalk it up to, oh yeah, it just does whatever. Um, stocks are crazy. I'm certainly not going to chase it, but you know, if you were lucky, if you were holding long enough, then great. Good for you on that one. <laughs> but this is trading. This is the market. And another great instance too, to not try to compare yourself to other people and the trading is that way. But this, I feel like this is a little bit different that I was watching the exact same thing as Matt Monaco, but yeah, he was able to pull that 4k out of this trade too. When I was really denying the strength of this trade to even happen, I was watching it so hard and really denying to say, God, you know, it's moving up in price, but to say that there's support coming in for this trade is uh, really there. So <sighs> that's the difference between me and Matt Monaco. He was seeing something, diff something far different than I was. And of course, has a lot more money to swing on these types of trades for his position size than I do. <sighs> it's just tough. And then of course, he's got this massive, awesome green week. And then I'm ending the week. Every single one of these days, I've been ending the red. <sighs> <laughs> just gotta exhale I gotta learn from it and move on that's what trading is but golly one that can't even really say that's one that got away it's just it's just a weird chart it's um, is what it is and maybe we'll talk about it a little bit more in the monthly recap coming this weekend for me on this october month certainly a lot to go over there uh, this, as this month's developed certainly grew a lot more in a lot changed in the market in general as well. And I think I didn't, not that I didn't adapt to it very well, but uh, didn't, wasn't wise enough to maybe step out a little bit sooner or kind of readjust and put in a different game plan as the signs were showing themselves to be changing. Yeah, we'll get into that over the weekend here with the new PC setup that I will be excited to start building this weekend as well. Other little charts that I wanted to mention, Mark had a really nice first green day today after pretty hard sell-off downtrend it had from the parabolic move. Uh, again, a choppier chart. Let's cut out that parabolic move so it doesn't really taint the view here. Yeah, pretending it was kind of holding on this Wednesday here, Thursday, showed like a little bit of support maybe, but then continued to die off. And then, but just, man, strength, volume coming in. Very nice percentage move, block trade there uh, in the morning session. And kind of developed, held VWAP, reclaimed VWAP a little bit for the afternoon session. It looks like it was going to potentially squeeze to a newer or higher day from there, but ended up pulling back harder into the close here. That was Mark. And then here I am again. I want to mention GFAI and then UAVS as well for these one day big percentage movers with volume. I continue time and time again to wake up early and get into these crazy morning volatilities, just get slapped around by whatever the market makers and just my own stupidity can get myself into, take whatever loss that I end up with. And then it goes to the lunch session, afternoon session, and just becomes this repeatable, probable, dying, bleeding pattern. And this was a little bit earlier than I probably would have jumped in on this one as a short or what I, in the last few days, at least I've been trying to plot as aware of God, these things just continue to die off. And they, yeah, if you're getting short uh, in this area here, it's not like you're going to be end up negative in the trade. Like you're, it's not the most profitable time to be entering the trade here or there. But then even going to UAVS, same thing. They do whatever they want to do in the pre-market. They can have their new little highs, but then you get closer to the what would be the 12 Eastern Standard Time frame. It's just dead. There's no more volume coming on these things. Nobody wants to touch them. And it is a little bit, it's a Friday. So I would think a little bit more sketchy to try and play this on a Friday specifically because of that afternoon potential that they start to squeeze, start to ramp up, do something crazy like that. But even on a Friday, these two, especially I haven't done any hard scanning as well to see if there's other ones of those pre-market movers that have done a similar thing. Man, I think I got to start hopping in on this one. It certainly bodes well to my desire for the higher hit rate higher probable trades not necessarily basing it off of any hard technical or fundamental data but just the truth and reality of how these are being traded that uh, everybody wants to be a part of them and play with them in the morning session the volatility and that craziness there and gf ai was a perfect one today too of uh, what a breakdown this was chris even mentioned it well of, we go from high of day to new low of day market hours to back to new high of day within 
three, four minutes. Are you freaking kidding me? The amount of volatility that ensued. Judas Priest. I want to get away, uh, far away from that as possible and just play that consistent hit rate when nobody else wants to even touch it or be a part of it. I will certainly collect those little nickels on the ground that are freely available. I'm so certainly going to do a lot more charting, on, a lot more plotting on this type of pattern to see if it is actually something fundamentally based, I want to say, but uh, virtuously based on how these are traded, like I mentioned, of if it's true that, you know, you get to that 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time frame, that noon hour that all the traders just clocked out and you go, yeah, you know, I'm kind of done for the day anyway. And they give up on all these uh, big movers and they all just kind of for the rest of that day. We, I have not seen many crazy ones that continue a full green day trend in a long, long time. So that would really be the only thing I'm risking against that type of trade that way um, because they don't really have any amount of strength to even climb back to VWAP at that point too. And there's obviously certain different, uh, I wouldn't be looking to do this one on a multi-day mover or a, any different chart like that compared to what these ones were on a first green day, crazy pre-market news catalyst, whatever pushes these things up. <sighs> I could be pretty excited about that trade. That is really all I had for today. Nothing really hard on my scanner to watch this that I've been doing right now. Got a lot of other projects going on, a lot of sleep to catch up on as well, but we will also hammer that monthly recap this weekend as well for this month of October. I think I'm in the negative, close to 200 bucks. I ended up, I was screened for the longest time, like halfway through and then like just ate it on a few different tickers. But that'll be this weekend. I sincerely thank you guys for watching this short and sweet Nice little video. We will catch you guys on the next one.